welcome to the second video in the Ravelry series. In this video, I want to give you some hints and tips to find the right yarn for the project. Now, what I have here on the screen is a sweater designed by Julia Blake and it's called A Little Knit Music. Now, what she's done is she has made the music stave and with clever knitting, she has created the cleft and with beads she made the notes for Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. I think it is absolutely beautiful. Now if I want to knit this for myself, what yarn am I going to use? Okay, so this is the scenario. You've got the pattern that you want to use, now you are yarn hunting. You might have yarn in your stash that you might want to use, you might not. Maybe you think it's suitable, maybe you're not sure. Whatever the reason, you have the pattern, but you need to find the yarn. Okay. Some patterns on Ravelry will give you a suggested yarn, like this one, which makes it a whole lot easier. Some will not. They will only give you the yarn weight. With this one, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but if you have a suggested yarn, it's easier. Okay, so this one says you can either use Sweet Georgia Yarns Superwash Worsted. I'm going to right click and open in a new tab. Or you can use Madeline Tosh Tosh Vintage. Okay, so let me see. Can you see that Ravelry also, it doesn't only have a database of patterns it also has a database of yarn now you can read about sweet georgia superwash worsted here we can see that there's 200 yards and the unit weight is 115 grams or you can also use madeline tosh which is 200 yards on they don't give you the grams which makes it more difficult but it's not a big deal you can always google the um, yarn to see how many grams are on a ball let's go with the first one so here we have sweet georgia is the maker and superwash worsted is the yarn the the um the name of the yarn in the brand okay the first thing you can do is go to yarnsup.com if you go to yarnsup.com you will get to this page i have already typed in sweet georgia i want to find the yarns from sweet georgia and it um i can search search for sweet georgia and now it gives me all the yarns from sweet georgia i'm looking for super wash worsted and there we have it okay it tells me everything about this yarn this is the same information that i have this side on ravelry it tells me about the yarn but down at the bottom it tells me suggested substitutes sunshine yarns make a merino worsted that's a 99 percent match Neighborhood Fiber makes a studio worsted, which is a 99% match. This is great if you live in Europe or in America. You can easily, easily find a substitute here. Now, for us in South Africa, it's not that easy because the South African yarn houses haven't yet caught on to this wonderful world of yarn sup, so they haven't listed their yarns. So, yarn sup works very well when you're not in South Africa. Now, if you're in South Africa, I'm going to give you another trick. It involves a little bit more. Okay. We can see here that there's 115 grams. And what is the size of the ball? Oh, can I see that anyway? Uh, let's go back to this one. Here, here's the ball size. Okay, Yarn Sub gave us the ball size. They give us 115 grams and you get 183 meters now you can do this on paper and pen i'm going to do it on excel for the sake of making it easier 
So we have, we have grams and we have meters. Oops, Myers. Okay, so we have, what did we say? 115 grams is how many meters? Uh, 183. No, I don't want to open that. That was a mistake. Sorry. 183 meters. Let me just close that down. Otherwise, it's going to interrupt us. Okay. So I want to find how many meters on a 100 gram hank or ball because that is what we have in South Africa. Now, if I want to get this 115 to a hundred. How am I going to do it? I'm going to divide by 115 to get one. And then I'm going to multiply with a hundred to get a hundred. Do you agree? Okay. Now, if this 115 is equal to 183 meters, whatever I do in this part of the calculation, I've also got to do in this part. Otherwise, there won't be an equal sign. Let me make it easier for you to see this. 150 meters is equal to... Uh, 115 grams is equal to 183 meters. I want the same thing here. I want an equal sign in the middle. So I want to do whatever I did to get from 115 to 100. I also want to do this side. So here I took the, that number, I divided it by 115, and I timed it with 100. So let's do the same this side. We take the 133, we divide it by 115, and we multiply it with 100. So the, the, the equivalent is about 159 meters on 100 gram. What if this yarn is um, balled in 50 gram balls? What will I do then? I divide it by 2 to get 50. So I have to divide by 2 here as well. Uh, where's my division? Okay. So I'm looking in South Africa. I'm looking for something that's either 159 more or less plus or minus to 100 gram or 79.5, 80 something meters to 50 gram. That's what I want. Okay, I can tell you which yarn will work perfectly for that. How many from African expressions? Let's see. This is 87 meters on 50 gram. 87 meters on 50 gram. 87. It's a little bit off. But that is so little that I can eliminate the difference with the needle size. If I go back to the pattern, it tells me there's a gauge. It tells me that on 18 stitches and 27 rows, I should have 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter in stockinette stitch. Now, if I make the swatch, I'm not going to cast on 18 stitches. I'm going to cast on about 30. I'm not going to knit 27 rows. I'm going to knit about 35 rows. A little bit more. Because the edges messes around with your tension gauge. So if I knit this gauge and I measure the, the 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter on the inside. And I see that I'm a little bit off on the gauge. I can either go a little bit bigger on the needle or a little bit smaller on the needle depending on what my gauge is, to get to that specific gauge. You don't need to match it exactly. Exactly. It doesn't have to be exactly 159.1304 meters on a 100 gram hank. It doesn't have to be. It can be more or less the same. The, the little bit that it's out, you can set straight with your tension by changing the needle size. Yes, you have to swatch. Yes, I know we hate swatching. But if you want the thing to sit properly, swatch. To make that little swatch in the beginning is going to take you half an hour. It's either half an hour extra or you might knit for days and you might be totally dissatisfied with the end result and you frog it. How much time have you wasted there? 
think about it that way. I can either waste half an hour or I can waste days. It's not worth it. Swatch. It's as simple as that. Swatch. So use your Ravelry yarn database to see exactly what you are working with. Tells you about the yarn. And then you can go to yarnsup.com and find an alternative. Or you find an alternative with the length per 100 gram. Why do we do that? The length per 100 gram gives you the weight. So you will find the same weight. The other thing, however, that you have to keep in mind is this. The Ravelry database tells you what is in that yarn that she's used. She's used Merino. With other words, you need to either stick to Merino or you need to know your fibers well enough to substitute. Let me give you a quick breakdown. Merino is elastic. Cotton is not. If you make this thing with cotton yarn, you will not get the same end result because cotton is not elastic. It will not sit in the same way that the merino is sitting. There's a whole um, teaching on fiber in the Patreon database that I've done. Scroll down. Go look for it. There's a whole thing about fiber. You need to match the fiber. Yes, you can substitute merino for acrylic yarn that's been made to imitate merino. You can, because it's made to be elastic. But you also find acrylic yarns which has been made to imitate cotton without elasticity. Make sure you pick the fiber that will behave in the same way that this fiber is behaving. So it has to be merino or a damn good imitation of merino. Otherwise you won't have the same result. I hope this helps you.